Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Always an exciting day to show off a new piece of equipment. For those of you who follow the Facebook page, I've had some pictures up of this over the past few weeks. Uh, it came recently, just got it set up. This is Tormach's new PSG612. It's a six inch by 12 inch personal surface grinder. I'm super excited to have it in here. For those of you who have followed the bullet making and copper jacket making series, this I think should be a useful tool for precision grinding both flat surfaces and I've been looking into a, a Herrig or another type of fixture to grind punches. So in this video I wanted to just show off the machine. It literally, I've only had it running for a couple of days now. We'll run a test part on it and sort of walk it through its paces. I'm not gonna to comment too much on functionality, whether it's positives or negatives, because the machine's new, too new to me, but also I just don't have any experience running surface grinders, so it wouldn't be fair for me to uh, say, any, say much just yet. Um, these can be dangerous, I suppose like any tool, but you do need to be careful if you, as I understand it, if you feed too much into the wheel, you can shatter them, so you do need to be wearing uh, safety glasses. Uh, I bought this from Tormach with this magnetic chuck on it. I've not dressed the chuck yet. It's just out of the box. I The only thing on here that didn't come with it is uh, this indicator. It did include the indicator holder, which is nice. Um, and this is an SPI tenths indicator. And just a real quick overview, you know, old school or manual surface grinders, you rotated the X and the Y by hand. This is a, I think they call it a semi-automated somewhere. Basically this doesn't, it's not a CNC grinder. There's no G code to it. But what it does is you set these two stops here for your X um, motion and then your Y is dictated via this feed. So how quickly it feeds in. You've got, they say four different patterns. It's, you know, certainly a few different ones that we can, whether it's zigzagging or back and forth or a sort of a angled motion. And let's see here, what else? As a very, as a step back, for those of you who may not know what a surface grinder does, surface grinders are great for, for, for very precise finished work. Machining can be precise as well, but with machining you're cutting, you're forming a chip, there's tool pressure and deflection. And which can be its own problems, not to mention the repeatability of it. So what a lot of times folks do is they'll surface grind stuff down to the final tolerance. Also, you'll use these after the part's been heat treated, both because after it's been heat treated, it may have moved on you dimensionally, but also uh, you can surface grind any hardness, so far as I know, for fair steels, whereas uh, machining hardened stuff isn't always so fun or practical. Um, so first off, I thought what we'd do is throw in a toolmaker's vise, and then I've got a chunk of 4140 that I've been playing with. I actually already surface ground as a test cut the one side. Let's go ahead and surface grind the other side. This is just raw uh, scale from the mill. So let's go ahead and set up the part here. Not too worried about the vise being perfectly parallel in this instance. Close, that's close enough. So now we can use the X key here to turn on the magnetic chuck. So that's not going anywhere. Now we you've got a level surface there. So we can use this new, I bought this toolmaker's vise from Tormach. I already have quite a few. But this one's really nice, nicer than the other ones I've got. It's got a spring in it that makes it easier to stay in each notch. Uh, I was really pleased with it. Okay. Okay, now our part's in there. So we will move the table over with the hand wheel. And what we can do, this controls our Z, is we'll go close. Okay, now we're not touching. Now, let's do, let me zoom in here on the wheel and show you the indicator. So what we can do, we're close now. 
we can preload our indicator. Oops, here we go. So now instead of relying on the tick marks on the Z feed, we can rely on our indicator. And remember, this is a tenths indicator, so one is one thousandth, two is two thousandths, and the ticks in between are ten thousandth ticks. And if we feed down, so you can see, and I'm not sure if I believe this is perfectly accurate as an indicator, but you know, not not crazy to think you could control a few tenths at a time. Anyways, I don't want to feed too far down because we want to, we don't want to start too low here on our part. So let's do let's zoom back out here and keep getting set up. Okay, so I'm going to come off the part totally and we're going to just take it easy here again. Still learning the machine. No need to go crazy. Now, what I'm going to do is just take you know half a thou. I don't think we'll be touching at this point but I uh, want to be safe, like I said. So, you can turn the machine on. You can turn the, again, let's make sure it's totally clear. Once you're done with the Y, you can tuck the handle back away, turn the wheel on, and we'll select our mode. We'll do the zigzag, and we've got a green light. I think if you're outside your travel zone, actually we can try that. Yeah, see, if you move outside, you get a red light here, which means you can't start. So now we're inside. So now start. You can see our two handles are automatically moving. Now, by rotating the feed knob, you can speed up the Y feed in. Okay, so we're not touching yet, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Wheel off. I'm going to come back out. And I'm going to just hand feed it. Okay, there we just touched, so it's back up here. Okay. Having the dial here makes it really nice because you uh, don't have to worry about backlash because you know what your actual movement is. Starting off the part, turn the wheel on. I'm going to move the camera here so you can see a little bit closer to the part for the surface finish. Okay, we're all the way off. So if you can... Okay, our wheel is stopped. If you can see... Here we can pull the Y out. We actually still have some scale left, so let's take a thousandth more and see what it does for the surface finish. I dialed in my thousandth, turn the wheel on, make sure we're clear.
and you should be able to see we're now making a full pass on the top of the part. Let's zoom back out here and take a look further away. Okay, we've got maybe a uh, three-eighths or a half inch left on the part that we haven't ground down. I'm gonna stop it there so we can see the difference. Okay, there's the part, obviously on the left side, the area we hadn't yet ground down. And, you know, it goes without saying, it's silky smooth. It's a pretty cool feeling. There's a ripple, probably hard to capture on the camera. Um, so, like I said, I am new to surface grinding, so I don't want to comment beyond that other than it seems to look good to me. Anyways. Uh, that's all for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed that. Just a quick introduction to the machine. A lot more to come. I'll, I'll probably do a more thorough sort of review of it after I get more comfortable with it and obviously looking forward to making some parts with it. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, please do me a favor, comment below, like it. Uh, check us out on our Facebook page. We've got lots of sort of behind the scenes and just daily life pictures uh, in the, from the shop. And otherwise, take care, folks. Thanks.